Your old buddy Michael Reno here with Mostly Acoustic. Today I want to show you a couple of my guitars and tell you a little secret about something that's uh, turned out to be a, a good deal for me. This is my old 1949 ES125. It's the thick one. Uh, I found this guitar in Nashville at Fanny's out in East Nashville. Check out Fanny's. You gotta go there. The gals that run it are a hoot and they've got some of the coolest old guitars that you'd want to look at in Nashville. They've got the stuff that the big stores don't have. And they got vintage clothing and cool stuff. So check out Fanny's in East Nashville. When I got this guitar, it was, uh, it was not in this kind of condition. They, uh, as you can see, it's got an old P90 pickup, an old dog ear in it. And as you can see, it's got, uh, it's got the, uh, the pole pieces that are non-adjustable. That puts it at early 1950 back. This one turns out we're 99% sure is a, a 49, so I'm a year older than it is. The thing about a lot of these old P90 pickups is they're not potted. In other words, they're not sealed in wax when they're made. So they tend to degrade over the years. This one uh, was typical of what a lot of them do. This one, uh, when I plugged it in and played it, I knew that I was going to have to do something about this pickup because the highs on it would shatter glass. It was just all highs and the rest of it was sort of shot. So I called the guy that knows as much about these pickups as anybody in the country, my friend Lindy Fralin uh, up in Virginia. And he said, send it to me and I'll fix it. And he did. I sent him this pickup. He rewound it. It's right back, oh, like it probably was new or maybe better and I left the I could have put the adjustable pole pieces in but I wanted to leave the originals because that's pretty much designates this guitar as a 49 rather than a 50 just one of those things I wanted to keep uh, as you can see this is not an original pick guard this is a, a copy of the L5 Gibson pick guards but it just added a little class to it of course it can be removed uh, the uh, volume and tone knobs were not original to it. These are uh, basically copies of the originals. Uh, they've been aged by me to sort of fit the looks of the guitar. The rest of it is pretty much as it came. Original tuners, uh, the neck, the finish is worn off the neck. You can see it uh, feels like a pool cue, not slippery at all hand doesn't stick to it. Now, these guitars, it turns out, are really great for guys like me, singer-songwriters. They're sort of an undiscovered uh, guitar in that genre. Uh, not many people play in arch tops because typically arch tops, I'll turn the sound down and you can listen to it acoustically. Not bad, but not this. Now that's coming through uh, a 1970 uh, Fender uh, Princeton with a JBL speaker in it. So it depends on what you're plugging into, of course, as well. But these guitars, when you plug them up and run them clean through a good amp, they sound is, they just got such a great sound for. Rusty hinges on the doors, dusty papers on the floors, scattered dreams and nothing more. Plus you've got that great vintage vibe. Now these guitars are not expensive. There are a lot of them around. They made a bunch of them. Uh, and for the price of a, a, a fairly good Taylor or Martin, fairly good, we're talking about around a thousand bucks, you can have one of these. Uh, you can get a, a nice one for around twelve hundred bucks and you get this great vintage vibe with it. 
-hmm. plays great, sounds good. I'm tickled to death with it. Now I'm going to show you a trick. Stay tuned. <laughs> we've got here is a 1948 Gibson L50. Now these guitars of course were all acoustic. They didn't come with pickups. That wasn't a deal. It's a carved spruce top and mahogany back and sides typically, mahogany neck. Now these things basically were sort of the J45 of Gibson's arch top line. They were sort of the working man's arch top. Now listen to this guitar unplugged. Sort of like the uh, ES-125, but when you plug it into an amp. Now, the trick is how do you electrify these guitars? I think I may have given, I think I gave 800 bucks for this guitar. Now, again, I put an L5 pick guard on it to sort of dress it up. Uh, other than that, I've not much done much to it other than I've changed the tuners on it. These are uh, from Stu Mac. They're... Uh, they're the uh, aged uh, tulip buttons. Uh, work good. I'm fine with it. Now, this guitar, again, is not really much for a singer-songwriter to use. If you're accompanying yourself, especially solo or maybe in a duo, this guitar is not going to do much. But as you can see, I've put a pickup on this one. Now, the trick about putting a pickup on these L50s or L48s, which are uh, maple top guitars, laminated. You can buy them, uh, typically you can buy them anywhere from $600 to, some people want a lot of money for them, but there's a world of them out there. Look on Reverb. There's a ton of them out there. Find you one and find this pickup right here. K-R-I-V-O, Crevo, I assume is the way it's pronounced. The guy that makes them lives in Oregon. Uh, I'll put the link uh, to his website uh, below here. Uh, but the thing about them is, you can see, this pickup is maybe a quarter inch thick, maybe a quarter inch, maybe three sixteenths. The thing about these guitars, as you can see, is the fretboard is right down on the top, so there's not much room to put a pickup. Now, if you were going to put a P90 or a humbucker of any other kind or even a single coil, you would need to cut a hole in the top. You don't want to do that on these L model guitars. The, the ES model guitars, the bracing runs parallel and it's wide enough apart here that they could cut a hole in the top or back here at the bridge to make a double pickup. So what this does, the bracing runs like this in a V-shape on these guitars. These were meant to be acoustic guitars. So if you try cutting a hole in here for a pickup, you're going to cut those braces. You don't want to do that. So this fellow makes these pickups and they mount with uh, just putty, just an adhesive putty that won't hurt the finish of the guitar, mount it on there, and then they come, of course, with a long cord with a quarter inch jack on the back. What I did was I mounted a tone and volume onto my pick guard. Maybe you can see under there. And then the wiring, of course, goes into the F hole. And this guitar already had a jack hole in it. The guy that I bought it from had a little, uh, just a little round transducer uh, inside that sounded like a little round transducer. It didn't have much tone. So the jack was already in here. I'll do a video sometime to show you how to thread jacks and all that kind of thing. Uh, on the uh, ES-125, I did a whole bunch of threading to get the, the pots back through and all that. I'll show you sometime the trick to doing that. But these quarter inch thick or 3 16 inch pickups are the very trick. And of course they have adjustable pole pieces and uh, they're a humbucker. So they don't buzz. And they sound great. So I would say the pickups are about 200 bucks with the, the pots and the knobs, the jack, 
the capacitor these pit guards are around a hundred bucks but boy they sure dress one up i would say i've got less than twelve hundred dollars in this guitar and i play it on the road a lot i played it uh, this last year on uh, the pbs uh, show song of the mountains you get a lot of compliments and you're going to look and sound a little bit different than everybody out there in the Americana or the singer-songwriter world. These old guitars have got such a cool vibe. They really do. So do yourself a favor. Go find you an old arch top, one that plays well, and put one of these pickups on it. And if you want, go ahead and do what I did. Put you a pick guard on it. Put you a tone and a volume knob on there and you'll be one of the coolest people walking down the street, I tell you what. Well, anyway, that's it for today. Thanks for tuning in to Mostly Acoustic, and this is your old buddy Michael Reno saying, go find something and do something with it. See you.